Hello everyone and welcome back to War Thunder with you Body Uppis. War Thunder Plains in Finland has been on a break for a good while, but it's coming back with this extra long episode. So far in this series we have talked about some of the fighters that are in War Thunder and were used in Finland during the Second World War. Now it's time to cover the most numerous and probably the most significant bomber that was used here up north during the Second World War and even after it, and that of course is the Bristol Blenheim. The Blenheim has been in War Thunder since the start and its 3D model probably could use a facelift. It sits at rank 1 in the British bomber line at battle rating 2.0. The Blenheim in game is better armed than the ones used in Finland. It has a dorsal turret with two light machine guns and a turret blister underneath the nose with a second pair of light machine guns. And there's of course the ludicrously situated machine gun in the left wing that's almost impossible to use effectively. There are only two bomb options, either four 250 pound or two 500 pound ones for a 1000 pound total amount. In War Thunder the Blenheim is quite nimble for a bomber and it has an okay top speed, but most players quickly grind through it to reach more famous planes. Like many other rank 1 bombers, it's quite forgettable. That's a shame because in Finland this long nose played a big role in bombing and photographing it while also even managing to down a few planes with its dorsal gun. Before looking into its role in Finland, let's talk about how the Blenheim came to be in the first place. The Bristol Blenheim was conceived from the Type 142 passenger aircraft prototype, nicknamed Britain First. On its maiden flight on 12th of April 1935, it managed to reach a top speed of 434 km per hour, which was much faster than the British fighter planes of the time. Lord Rottermere, a rich newspaper owner, had ordered a plane for himself as a personal transport while also hoping to spark an interest in a possible new bomber at the Air Ministry. His plan worked and the plane was redesigned for a 1000 pound bomb load and machine gun armament while the wings were moved to the center of the fuselage. This model was given the name Type 142M but it was changed to Blenheim which was the name of Lord Rottermere's estate. The Air Ministry ordered 150 Blenheims in August 1935, even though no prototypes had been made. The first planes were delivered in June 1936. First in production was the Mark I, which had a distinctive stubby nose section. In 1938 it was replaced by the Mark IV on the production lines, which is the model we have in War Thunder. The Mark IV had an improved cockpit which was longer and stepped. It also had improved Bristol Mercury engines. There were other variants too of the Blenheim, but only Mark I and IV were used in Finland. In addition to Finland, the Blenheim was exported to Turkey, Yugoslavia, Romania, Greece and Portugal. Altogether, 5300 Blenheims were produced in the UK, Finland and Yugoslavia. When the Second World War started in 1939, it quickly became clear to the British that the Blenheim could no longer fly away from new German fighters and its weak defensive armament meant that it couldn't defend itself properly. Losses were heavy in British use and in 1941 Blenheims were relegated to second line duty in the Royal Air Force. So how did the Blenheim end up in Finland and did it fare any better in here? In the mid-1930s, Finland was looking for its first modern monoplane bomber aircraft. The commander of the Finnish Air Force, General Lundqvist, preferred British models with Handley Page Hampton being his favorite. The chief of staff, later Marshal and President of Finland, Carl Gustav Mannerheim, preferred German planes such as the Junkers Ju-86 and Heinkel 111. The Hampton was not yet in production and the HG-111 was not available for export, so the final candidates were Blenheim and the Ju-86. After hearing that the Ju-86 was not performing well in neighboring Sweden and General Lundqvist strongly arguing for Blenheim, the British bomber was chosen in the end. The Blenheim also had the advantage that the new state aircraft factory already had license to build its Mercury engines. The argument between Mannerheim and Lundqvist got so heated that Lundqvist handed in his resignation, which Mannerheim did not accept. The Finns first purchased 18 Blenheim Mark I's from the UK in 1936 and they were flown to Finland between July 1937 and July 1938. In Finland, these first British-made Blenheims were referred to as the first series, many of which were later to follow. With their completely metal construction, the Blenheim quickly gained the nickname Peldiheikki, which roughly translates to Tin Henry, having a similar meaning to a tin can. The second series of 15 planes was to be built in Finland at the state aircraft factory. In the spring of 1938, the CEO of the factory, Erkki Mäkinen, traveled to the Bristol factory in Filton to get acquainted with the manufacturing of Blenheims. It soon became clear to him that the small plant in Finland was facing a daunting task. 
it would take half a year just to translate the thousands of technical documents that were required for producing blenheims. There were 6,000 workers in Filton who were all tasked solely with building blenheims. They would produce an average of 8 planes per month. The state aircraft factory in Finland had 800 workers at that time and some of them were already building other types of planes or performing maintenance on existing ones. On top of everything, the Air Force headquarters in Finland was ordering changes and improvements to be made to the second series of Blenheims. Most of these had to be dropped, but dozens of them were implemented to the series nonetheless. As a result of these delays, the first Finnish built Blenheims started to roll out from the factory in the summer of 1941. In the summer of 1939, the threat of war in Finland started to become clear and the Finnish Air Force realized that it had far too fighters to counter any Soviet offensive. As a result, the construction of the second Blenheim series in Finland was halted and the capacity was allocated for building licensed Fokker D-21 fighters. The winter war broke out between Finland and the Soviet Union in late November 1939 and the desperation of the Finnish Air Force soon reached its climax. It was willing to buy anything that flew from any country that was willing to sell. The British had excess production capacity of Mark IV Blenheims and sympathy towards a fellow democracy fighting for its freedom. The Finns were able to acquire 12 long-nosed Blenheims which were hastily flown to Finland. One Blenheim was lost on the way and one was damaged in a crash landing. This batch was referred to as the third series of Blenheims in Finland. In February 1940, Renewed Soviet offensives had turned the situation critical in Finland and the British were willing to sell another 12 Blenheims. This time though they were the older Mark I's with shorter noses, but they too were quickly flown to Finland still in February 1940. This was referred to as the fourth series. The planes were flown to Finland in secret by British pilots. The winter war ended in March 1940 and the Finnish Air Force was still left with a huge shortage of all types of aircraft, especially bombers. As a result, the work on the license-built Finnish Blenheims continued again. When World War II escalated in the spring of 1940, this effort was hampered again as the United Kingdom halted all exports of aircraft material. As a result, some raw materials and components for the Blenheims had to be bought from Sweden, Switzerland and even Germany. Quite amusing that the Germans provided materials for constructing British-designed planes. In June 1941, it was clear that Finland would soon be at war with the Soviet Union again, but this time it would be an offensive war for the Finns. Bombers were more important in this type of warfare, and accordingly, the Air Force staff ordered another 20 Blenheims from the state aircraft factory. They would be Mark 1s and were referred to as the 5th series. The construction of this series was aided by the sale of Mercury engines and other components that the Germans had captured in Poland. The final 6th series was ordered in late 1941 and it would consist of 10 long-nosed Mark IV Blenheims that were to be built in Finland. Yugoslavia had started to build their own licensed Blenheim Mark IVs at a factory called Icarus shortly before being invaded by the Germans. The invaders had no use for the loads of Blenheim components and wanted to get rid of them in order to free up factory space. The Finns quickly jumped on this opportunity to acquire more Blenheim components and spares. Equally important for the Finns were the jigs and blueprints for the Mark IV Blenheims, which they still did not possess. The Yugoslav components and materials played such a role in the 6 series that the state aircraft factory in Finland considered them foreign planes which were just repaired in Finland. In any case, the final Blenheim series was ready by the spring of 1944. Altogether, the Finnish Air Force had acquired 97 Blenheims, but the number of flightworthy aircraft was always much lower. The 7 series of 5 Mark I Blenheims was planned to be put together at the state aircraft factory from excess spare parts in the summer of 1944. However, the factory was already overloaded with repairing existing aircraft and constructing new fighter planes and the order was soon dropped. The armament of Blenheims in Finland was poor, both bomb and machine gun wise. Pilot controlled one Vickers or two Browning machine guns on the left wing. Both of these were small caliber machine guns and they were mounted so far in the left wing that it made them very difficult to aim correctly. No enemy planes were ever shot down with the wing machine gun in Finnish use. The dorsal turret housed one small caliber machine gun which was at first a British Vickers K in the third and fourth series of planes, Finnish Lahti L-33 in the first and second series or a 7.7mm Browning in the fifth and sixth series. Both the Vickers and Lahti used drum magazines which were disliked by the gunners. The belt-fed Browning was the preferred armament and it was installed in place of the other two when available. 
The dorsal guns were provided with reflector sights, but the gunners soon got rid of them in favor of simple mechanical sights and tracer bullets for aiming. In practice, the gun was only effective to about 100 meters anyway, according to gunners. Attempts were made to install a dual machine gun or one heavy machine gun in the turret, but the space was already cramped and the rearmament tests were soon dropped. The bomb load was considered equally insufficient, especially on the original UK-made Blenheims, which could only carry 526 kilograms of bombs. The Finnish license-built planes could theoretically carry up to 972 kilograms of bombs, but the poor condition of airfields near the front often required lighter loads. Bomb sizes ranged from 12.5 kilograms to 250 kilograms, which were rarely used though. Incendiary bomblets and cluster bomb cassettes could also be equipped. Like auto equipment in Finland, the bombs were very varied in origin. Finnish, British, German or Soviet made bombs were used. The bombs were aimed on target with the original well-regarded British Wimperis bomb sites, the complicated Austrian Gertz site or the simple mechanical Finnish made PW2. During the Winter War, the Blenheim crews preferred to carry loads of smaller bombs meant for large Soviet infantry units. In continuation war, the preference changed to 100 or 250 kg bombs for destroying airfields, bridges or train tracks. The Blenheims were equipped with Bristol Mercury 8, 8A or 15 engines, with the 15 having a bit more power to it. The more powerful engines were mostly used in Mark IV Blenheims. This together with the improved nose section made it the preferred variant over Mark I. With Mercury 8, the Blenheim could reach a speed of 430 km per hour at 4.5 km altitude, and with Mercury 15s, 450 km per hour, though this required 100 octane fuel, which wasn't always available in Finland. The Blenheim had excellent flight characteristics at high altitudes. At 7 km, it could still reach a speed of 400 km per hour. This meant that most enemy fighters could not reach it, but friendly fighters couldn't provide cover either. Major logistical issues were caused by the hodgepodge of different instruments and gauges that were used in different Blenheim series. Some were metric, some were in imperial units, some were made in Finland or the UK, some were war bounded from crashed Soviet planes and some were bought from third countries like Germany. Fun fact, for a time, the tires for Finnish Blenheims were made by Nokia. Yes, that Nokia. Unlike their mobile phones in the future, the tires produced by Nokia during the wartime were poor in quality due to lack of raw materials, such as rubber. Like many other Finnish planes, some Blenheims had skis installed during the winter. Operations in winter conditions were tough for the crew, when flying at 7000 meters, the temperature could drop to minus 50 Celsius. This was so cold that the camouflage paint on the plane started to peel off completely. The mechanics faced their own struggle when the planes were on ground during winter. Oil had to be drained out from the engines so it could be kept warm, and the engines had to be warmed up for hours before takeoffs. Often enough maintenance had to be done outside without any protection from the freezing weather. The winter war started badly for the Blenheims, a taste of what was to come. On the second day of the war, 1st of December 1939, three Blenheims of the 46th Bomber Squadron took off on a daring low-altitude night bombing mission deep behind enemy lines. They found and bombed their target with each plane expected to return to base on their own. All three got lost in the pitch black weather, light was only provided by civilian houses which had been set on fire by the invading Soviets. Two Blenheims miraculously made it back to the base by following train tracks and other landmarks at almost treetop altitude, but the third one crashed into a cliff, killing the whole crew. The Finnish Air Force had very few planes available during the Winter War, especially fighters. This meant that the Blenheims had no fighter cover and had to rely on their speed in order to escape from enemy fighters that were swarming the skies. The old and slow Soviet fighter I-15 didn't pose much danger, but I-153 Chaikas and I-16 Ishaks could sometimes catch the Blenheims by surprise. The best defensive measure for the Blenheim was to dive away, as Soviet fighters couldn't keep up, and the sole defensive machine gun provided little protection against determined Soviet pilots. During the 109 days of the Winter War, the Blenheims flew 423 missions, 12 planes were lost, with 7 of them being shot down by enemy fighters. 21 crew members were killed during the war, and one was taken captive. Blenheim gunners were credited with shooting down 5 enemy aircraft. At least 3 of these were I-153 Chaikas, with also one probably destroyed, and they were claimed just days before the armistice in March 1940. The severe losses in Blenheim units was a heavy blow, as other bomber types were sparsely available from foreign countries and it would take long before the Finnish license-built Blenheims would be ready. 
Only a handful of Linems were in flightworthy condition at a given time, as repairs were taking a lot of time. During the short peace between the wars, three more Blenheims were lost in accidents and two pilots were killed. Accidents were especially caused by deep snow, which could cause the Blenheim to flip over during landing. The fact that the Blenheim was coming outdated in 1941 didn't hold back Finnish pilots from going on dangerous missions with it during the continuation war. Long-range reconnaissance missions over the busy Murmansk railway were especially risky. The result of this risk-taking was that by September the Blenheim squadrons were essentially put out of action. Bomber Squadron 42, for example, did not have a single lightworthy Blenheim for a short while. The fearless attitude of Finnish Blenheim crews is well exemplified by the story of Corporal Mauri Rimpivar, who was serving as a radio man machine gunner with the 42nd Bomber Squadron in 1941. He proved himself capable at his job, as he had shot down a Soviet I-16 fighter at the start of the continuation war. While on a mission with Blenheim number BL-139, his aircraft was shot down. Corporal Rimbivar was the only one who managed to parachute out of the plane, both the pilot and observer were killed. He landed behind enemy lines and had to evade Soviet search parties for days. He made it back to his unit despite being exhausted and almost starved to death. He was immediately given two weeks of leave and a chance to leave the military for a job at the aircraft factory in Tampere. He took the leave, but declined the job as he knew he was much more needed in his plenum unit. After returning from leave, on his first mission, Rimbivar's plenum was shot down again, and this time he was killed. The callous risk-taking continued in 1942 and 1943 during the quiet stage of the continuation war. The Blenheims were tasked with bombing and photographing the front lines and Soviet airfields. Even all the airfields around Leningrad had to be photographed in February 1943. By 1944, the Blenheim was an obsolete design, but the Finns had to keep using them as not enough replacement aircraft were available from Germany or elsewhere. At least there was still plenty of resolve and ingenuity among the Finnish Blenheim crews. On the night of March 9, 1944, a group of five Blenheims was able to locate a stream of Soviet bombers that were returning from a bombing run over Tallinn, Estonia. The Blenheims were able to follow them to their airfield, which was lit up for landing, and proceeded to drop their bombs on the easy target. On June 9, 1944, hell broke loose on the Karelian Isthmus with the start of the Soviet counteroffensive. For the Blenheim units, this meant literally flights around the clock, thanks to the midnight sun. Despite the amount of missions, the risks were now lower, as the objectives were closer to, or at, the immediate front lines away from most enemy air defenses. The Blenheims were now also provided fighter cover by the new Messerschmitt Bf 109Gs bought from Germany. Considering the amount of anti-aircraft defenses and fighter aircraft that the Soviets had, the Finnish Blenheim losses could be considered as light at the closing stages of the continuation war. Sometimes they could fly through even heavy flak fire without any casualties but the crews were always not so lucky. Second Lieutenant Åke Östensson was serving as an observer in Blenheim number BL-197 on June 26, 1944. He was killed by the only bullet that hit his plane during a mission, fired by a Soviet P-39 Era Cobra. Finnish Blenheims flew at least 2,741 combat missions during the continuation war, and their dorsal gunners shot down three enemy aircraft. Two of these were I-16 Ishaks brought down at the start of the war. Overall, the three years of continuation war had been very taxing on the Blenheim squadrons. 41 planes were lost, 8 were shot down by enemy aircraft, 10 by anti-aircraft fire, and the rest were lost in accidents. The soft ground on Finnish airfields had a tendency of locking up the wheels on landing, which caused Blenheims to flip over. The plane was also hard to bring down if one engine malfunctioned. In September 1944, Finland signed an armistice with the Soviet Union, which required the Finns to rapidly expel the Germans out of northern Finland, or the Soviets would come and do it themselves. At the same time, most of the Finnish armed forces had to be demobilized. Bomber Squadron 42 with its Blenheims was among the few who had to still go fight in the Lapland War. The war wasn't very intense, but the autumn weather conditions and long distances made flying difficult, nonetheless. Bombing former brothers in arms was also an unappealing task, but it had to be done. The Germans did possess skilled flak units whose fire was led by radar. As a result, three more Blenheims were lost, with four crew members killed and two taken prisoner. On January 24, 1945, the last Blenheims were finally withdrawn from combat use as the war was essentially over with the Germans. Despite its outdated design and heavy losses during the wars, 
that Blenheim was considered as the right bomber choice for Finland. It was well suited to combat conditions in Finland and the infantile Finnish aviation industry was able to produce it at least in some numbers. The surviving 34 Blenheims served the Finnish Air Force long after the war. The Allied Control Commission stated that the Finnish Air Force could possess no aircraft capable of carrying bombs, so all bombing equipment had to be removed from the Blenheims. From that point on, they would perform in photography, training and target tug duties. Another slap in the face of the Finns was provided by the Bristol Aircraft Company, which demanded millions in royalty payments that had been cut off since 6th of December 1941, when the UK had declared war on Finland. In the spring of 1945, there were talks of turning the Blenheims to passenger aircraft, but it soon became clear that the changes required would be too costly and the idea was shelved. By 1948, there were 13 flightworthy Blenheims left, when the Air Force decided to refurbish them for some reason. Possibly the fact that the state aircraft factory still had personnel and spares left for the Blenheims played a role. The refurbishment stretched all the way until 1955, 14 years after the British had declared the Blenheim outdated. The last Blenheim flight was performed by BL-199 on 20th of May 1958. Altogether, the 97 Finnish Blenheims had amassed 17,500 flight hours, with BL-106 holding the record with 2,005 hours. Like most other wartime Finnish aircraft, the Blenheims met their fate one by one at the scrapyard. Except for one, a Finnish-built Mark IV variant serial number BL-200, which was among the final six series produced in Finland. After serving until summer 1958, it was put to storage and during spring 1960, it was turned into an outdoor monument. BL-200 spent over a decade outside at the mercy of weather and tourists who were allowed to enter the plane freely. In 1972, the plane was moved back into storage, but the Air Force wasn't interested in putting money and work towards its restoration, despite the efforts of amateur historians. In 2003, a voluntary restoration project was finally commenced and after years of work, BL-200 was revealed in its restored glory in 2008 in front of an audience consisting of World War II aviation veterans. Today you can see BL-200, nicknamed Lucky Longnose, after avoiding destruction on five different occasions at the Finnish Air Force Museum in Tikkakoski, central Finland. I'm planning to go see it myself later this summer. I hope you enjoyed this extra long episode in the series of War Thunder Planes in Finland. If you did, please give this a like and share it to anyone who's also interested in aviation history. Let me know in the comments if you have suggestions for future topics in my videos or ways to improve them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.